Hey everybody, this is Mike with On Point Preparedness. In part three of our escape and evasion series, I wanted to talk about impasses. That is, in our travels, you come across some type of obstacle that you can't go through, under, over, or around, unless you had the right skills and tools available ahead of time. Now, as Christians, and we talk about the end times and tribulation and persecution, I'm really feeling like we're going to have the need to be mobile, and impasses is going to be something that we're going to encounter. So I just want to get you thinking about the idea. This video isn't going to be a be-all, end-all of all the types of impasses that there are, nor is it all the ways in which you can defeat them. But it is going to give you guys a lot of good ideas, and again, get you to think about your plan. So first and foremost... When I originally recorded this video, I had this tool listed last, but I really need to list it first because it is such an important tool. And actually, uh, several years ago, before I had my first child, I had a Jeep Wrangler, and I sold it. And when I sold the Jeep, I actually sold this tool as well. It's called a hijack lift, and I'm kicking myself that I sold it because I had to buy a new one as I started to think about impasses and being prepared. So hijack lift is something that off-roaders use a lot. It can be used like any other jack to help you change a tire, but it also helps you get your vehicle unstuck from a multitude of different situations. So I just want to show you here what the hijack is. Uh, again, it's just from High Lift, the, the company, and it's about 48 inches tall, and you can see it here. And it is just simply a jack where you pull down the handle and this base part here lifts up. There is a whole variety of accessories that you can buy for the hijack lift. Um, some of them that are useful is the off-road base. This is a much larger base that you can use to give you more surface area if you're trying to jack in mud or snow or loose terrain. I think I got a picture of it here. You can see how much wider this base is than the actual hijack lift and why that might be a good tool to have. The jack itself is about 80 bucks. Uh, this base is about 40 and this one is also a necessity. It's a high lift jack lift mate. This actually goes onto the wheels because if you look at the hijack itself, let me just pull it back up here. Um, this part right here doesn't have a lot of extension to it. And so if you have a regular car or SUV, um, odds are that this may not have enough length to actually get under the frame of your car to lift it up. So that's where this lift mate comes in real handy. Now, why would you need all of this? Well, for one, obviously, if you have a flat tire and need to change it, this will work. But also, let's just think about one other example, snow impasses or mud impasses. Let's just say your car gets stuck and you don't have traction. Well, a simple remedy would be to pull out the high hijack lift and lift your tire up that's stuck and lift it up and put something underneath of it that will give it traction. You can use the mats inside of your car. So put that under the tire. You could find some nearby branches and put those under the tire. And, uh, you know, it will basically give you the traction to get out of the mud. And it's perfect. Another use for the hijack lift is that it can be used as a winch. So winches are pretty expensive if you want a good one. I mean, they're several hundred dollars. Then you have to talk about can you install it yourself or if you're going to have someone else install it, more money for the installation fees. And it just adds up and adds up. But the hijack lift, again, just having a couple of these things, it's all under 150 bucks. You will need some additional chains and cable straps. But you can see here, you can actually winch your car out. And all it is is simply connecting either chain or cable straps to a tree, then to your uh, hijack winch, or sorry, high lift jack. And then you're just going to use it normally. And you can see his tires here, they're actually moving as he winches this forward. Let me just get a good picture right here. You can actually start to see his tires start to move once he gets some tension on here. Now, there's a variety of ways to do this, but it's slow. 
but it is effective. And if you try to lift your wheel out and put some traction under it, and that still doesn't work, you could definitely try this option as well. Sorry, I just had to pause the video for just a moment. Um, but there probably are more uses for the high lift jack, more than what I've showed you in terms of just lifting your vehicle and using it as a winch. But it is definitely an invaluable tool, and it is fairly cheap. Again, the winch itself being 80 bucks, and each of the accessories being around $40 each. And so I bought another one of these, and I carry it in my car again for my bug out situation. Now, talking about some of my other tools, I did a video on my main channel featuring this red bolt cutter. It was entitled, oh, what was it? Bugging out and border fences. Now, if we look at this picture here, let me just drag it over to the screen here. The refugee crisis in the Middle East is pretty big, and there's a lot of Christians fleeing persecution, and they're, they're fleeing for their lives. A lot of them are killed um, by ISIS and by these extremist Islamic groups. And unfortunately, they're coming up against razor wire, barbed wire, chain link fences, and they're either getting completely stopped, they're getting hung up and injured, and if they were able to cut through it more effectively, they could probably escape without getting caught. You know, I don't know if all these people got caught by the security personnel, but again, the more time you're taking trying to get through these fences, the more risk you're assuming in getting caught by authorities. Now, I really don't see a lot of prepper channels talk about these bolt cutters, you know, having the need for it in your bug out pack. But I can imagine if we are in a wartime scenario here in the States, uh, there will be fences that are going to be erected that will serve as impasses, and you're going to have to find some way to get through them. These bolt cutters that I have are from Harbor Freight. It is a very cheap tool company. These cost me 8 bucks. It's an 8-inch bolt cutter set. It is slightly heavy. I don't have the exact weight, but its utility is worth its weight because I'll tell you what. I am almost positive that there will fen there will be fences going up, and I don't want me and my children to be in this type of situation. So I will choose to assume the extra weight. Now, these other things I do not carry on my pack. They are much too heavy. But I have some larger 24-inch Olympia Tools bolt cutters. It just helps me to cut through actual bolts, uh, even though I may not need to do that because of my lockpicking skills. And it is just a lot easier just to cut through it. So these ones are nice. They fold. It's very compact. I can keep it in my car at all times. Uh, just, you know, expanding my options. I'll put the link in the YouTube description box if you want to look at it. But um, I've tested it on some of my, you know, older locks and it cuts through it just fine. Haven't had any problems with it. Again, just nice to have. The other things I have here are crowbar. I really don't need to talk about that. That can help you get through impasses in a variety of different ways. But the last thing that I wanted to focus on was the crosscut saw. Now, take a look at this video. You guys are probably well aware of this. It wasn't uh, too long ago, but this is where we had the Gatlinburg fires. And particularly, there was this video called Escape from Hell. And this guy is driving down the mountainside trying to get away from the fire and I think at one point he's driving down the road and there is a down tree in front of him to where he can't get through it he had to backtrack and go down a different road so again thinking about trees falling down on the road as an impasse and you may not have an off-road vehicle that can go around it or you may be on this terrain where it's a ridge and you really can't go around it without risking your car flipping over but it's not just fires, and it's not just natural disasters. I mean, sure, if there's storms or fires or tornadoes that put down trees in your way and you're trying to escape, you need some way to cut through that so you can go on your way. And ideally, yeah, a chainsaw would be a great option. If you want to carry a chainsaw in your bug out plan, go for it. But you have to understand that's a lot more room that you have to account for. You also have to have the gasoline for all of that, but an alternative would be to have a crosscut saw. Now, I don't have the length of my crosscut saw. I'll put it in the YouTube description box once I find it and a link to the one that I use. 
but this saw can definitely go through a tree fairly quickly. And you can see this particular one, I can use it as a single, just me, but I can also put another handle on the other end if I want to do a two-person saw job. So we can make do of a tree pretty quickly that's fallen in the road. Now, it's not just natural disasters. I want us to expand our minds a little bit and think about all the other ways that trees might be in our way. We see war coming on the horizon. I mean, it's an absolute fact. And it actually might wash up on the shores of the U.S. unlike it has in prior wars before us. And if the bombs start falling, so do trees. And so you really got to account for that, that if there's bombs falling all over the place and you're trying to escape, there may be trees in your way. And if you could be on the most effective route, the fastest route, and just cut through a tree and go rather than have to backtrack and look at your map and figure out detours, I would rather just cut through the tree and go. And so again, a crosscut saw is a nice compact way of having a tool that can get through those trees, although a chainsaw would be better. And also this has utility at your camp base once you get there. Uh, this is going to help you get firewood, procure all that firewood. It's going to help you to maybe create some shelters if you need to do that as well. Some of the hand saws that you use for camping, they're really good for, you know, small fires and things like that, but you really need a bigger saw for long-term survival. Silky makes a saw called the Silky Katana. I can put a link in the YouTube description for that as well. I think uh, James from Waypoint Survival, I think you own one of these if you if you watch this video. But that's a great alternative to cut through trees and, and make do of firewood really quickly. But the crosscut saw is, again, a proven tool that you can use as well. So I hope you thought about impasses at the end of this video and how you might defeat a variety of them, whether it's natural disasters or natural materials lying in your way, whether it's man-made things in your way like fences or barbed wire or things of that nature. We want to stay with our cars if we have to be mobile and we don't want to give them up because of something that we could have prepared for a lot earlier on. So think about it especially what's in your area if you're in a northern region and you've got snow conditions or if you're out in the wilderness and you're going to have a lot of downed trees or things of that nature just give it some thought and think about the skills and tools that you need to have on hand but especially um, do take consideration of the high lift jack um, for off-roaders it is one of the most critical tools that they need and for people that need to escape and evade, I think it would do the same. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. God bless everybody.